Hey everybody, it's Steph. We are gonna get ready to get started in our class here pretty soon. We're just gonna wait for a few more students to come on. We are gonna be diving into our first subject area. So I'm really excited. I'm gonna share some really interesting things with you guys. So get your computers, tablets, or you can use your iPhone um, to um, do your course on. So just go ahead and take everything out. Tonight is gonna be a really chill night um, or morning, depending on when you're doing this. Um, so that you can kind of learn a little bit um, about how to keep your little ones safe. We're going to be focusing on certain subject areas, things like that. And I'm just getting myself prepared as well. I'm going to grab something for, my, for us, you guys. So... Um, again, take a couple minutes, get everything that you need together, um, and we'll get things going. You guys will notice I really love music, so I always try to have something really chill in the back, mellow, fun. This kind of gets you in the mood, because like when you're studying, sometimes it's just like, ah, why do I got to do this for the children? You could do this, you guys. We're going to do it together. My goal is for this first class for us to actually be finished in eight weeks. Y'all. You know what's up? Eight weeks. Um, I typically teach this one class um, that I, um, I used to do. It. it was the fast track course. And it was five weeks. And shout out to all my students out there that were hanging in there. We would work all day and then we would meet in the afternoon. I had a small little building downtown, Spokane, Washington. And uh, hopefully we'll have a new building soon. Um, I love the area, but the parking, ugh, crazy. But um, loved it. Love, 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 love downtown. Like if, yeah, I love downtown. And so, um, anyways, fast track course. Students were amazing. Um, they would come out every night, Monday through Thursday, and we would go through these classes like crazy. And honestly, it almost was therapeutic because like a lot of teachers had time to just like talk about what they were going through at work, talk about what they were going through with their kids. And so it actually came kind of therapeutic for some people. Some people were like, shoot, I'm ready to go home. But I think for most of us, we were like, okay, like this is our little support group to keep us in the field. And so shout out to all those ladies. Y'all are amazing. They probably are not going to take this course, but I still want to give a shout out. So um, I want to go ahead and get us started. I'm going to turn off our music, but... Um, I want to let you guys know before we begin, um, since this is your first class tonight, um, I want you to get prepared for your day, okay? So what this means is in the mornings, make sure you start getting like paper, pencil, um, any kind of note-taking devices that you can get because I think it really does help um, at the end of the day. Um, I want you guys to know that you're going to need two books. I'm going to show you them online where to buy them because I want to make sure you have them so you're prepared, ready to go. Um, my book is all chopped up. Yeah. So what I did was <laughs> I just cut the middle down, hole punched it, and put it in a binder so I could flip through it. And I have uh, both, both uh, books, so I'll show you those a little bit. Okay. We're going to get started. Let's do it. Okay. Lots of good energy. Lots of positive thinking. This is going to be great. It's going to be amazing. And I'm excited. So I hope you're excited too. All right. So 
lovely ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to cut my music off here. We'll turn it on later. You know, just got to have a, j j a jam. Um, so I want to first get us into the CDA council. Okay. So some of you guys are coming, uh, some of you guys are coming into this, like, I'm really not even sure what I am learning. Why do I need to learn this? So the CDA is basically the fundamentals of early childhood development. Okay. The CDA stands for Child Development Associates. It's not a real associate, you guys. I want to make sure you know that right away. It is a certificate program, okay? And basically what you're going to be doing is taking 120 hours, yes, 120 hours of training that's focused on all developmental domains of children. We're going to be looking at all of these different social aspects of early childhood education. And I think that's the one thing that really makes my um, kind of training stick out. So I am really into looking at social justice issues within early childhood education. I'm really into learning about what makes a kid tick, what makes a teacher tick, what makes a director go, what makes a family react the way they do. And so I really like looking at that and then coming up with ideas, solutions, all of those different things. And so some of the training is really heavy content um, that will make you emotional. Um, some people that have taken classes with me have actually cried while they've been in my class. And that's not to brag on that. That's to say, like, we teach out of heart. You know what I mean? We talk about teaching from the heart, but if you're not taught from the heart and you haven't had that experience, you know, it's hard to give that to another child or give that to another person. And so I am really excited um, about this training. So again, want to say this. This is your first step, okay? It's not the end all, it is your first step. So there is a video that um, is gonna be posted into our classroom, it's called Understanding um, Your Steps. And it goes over what steps you need to take. So again, this is the 120 hour course, okay? Once you finish that, then you're gonna go over to the CDA Council and you're going to apply for the certification, okay? And so that's really important for you to remember. So you're done with the classes. Now you're gonna go and you're going to actually pay for the certification process. This process kind of reminds me of like a CPA or um, someone that's studying for some type of bar. And what typically ends up happening, they um, will like take all these courses, clock all these hours, all these practicum hours, meaning um, how many, how long have you been working under someone? Um, and then they will go apply and they'll take tests and they'll get observed and all kinds of stuff. Like it's, it's a lot. So it's kind of the same thing for us. Um, CDI council has been around for so long, you guys, like it's amazing. And I love that they have this. A lot of people are like, well, why don't you just go get your AA? Okay. So just want to say this. So my background is in higher education and I was an enrollment advisor for a long time. Okay. So I would get students that would have a hundred out a hundred credits in random classes. Right. And you would think they would have a degree, but they don't, they do not have a degree and they've spent all this money. And then on top of that, after they've spent all this money, then they can't even finish a degree actually because they've used all the money up. So with this being said, certifications are not a bad thing. It really helps you to hone in on your skills. It allows you to think about what you're doing, how you're doing it, what, is you, what do you believe, what's your practice, and I think that's extremely important to remember. Um, is this course going to make you, like, perfect? Um, yeah. No, I'm just joking. No, it's not. But, <laughs> but what I think it's going to do, it's going to motivate you. And I want to motivate you. I think a lot, our industry is hard. Um, regardless if you're a director, hey, directors. Um, if you're an assistant director, hey, assistant director. If you're a teacher, hey, teachers. Whatever you are, a float, whatever. You're part of something so much bigger than what you could ever imagine. 
We are the ones that teach the doctors, the lawyers, the nurses, the, the teachers, <laughs> right? We teach all of these people and we are doing this not because, you know, um, well, actually I'm going to say this. There are some people that are like, this is an easy job. So I'm just going to go get the job. Right. But when they get in there and they get that reality check of, you know, a kid slapping you in the face after they're mad because you, you sang the wrong song or someone took their block, it kind of is a reality check, right? <laughs> like, okay, so I just got slapped, but what am I going to do? Um, hopefully that's not some of your experiences, but I think as you are in the field, there is going to be that one kid that might slap you, hit you, punch you, kick you. Um, because they're learning how to control their emotions. They're learning how to, uh, control their behaviors. And that is very hard for some children to do. So, um, we are there to help teach those social skills. And when we teach those skills to them, then they have an opportunity to develop and grow and just be amazing, to be rock stars. And that's what we want, right? Okay. Let's hop into the CDA or the uh, Council of Professional Development. Um, I'm going to um, get going here. And I think I said professional development, but it's professional recognition. So sorry about that, you guys. I get so excited. I like, forget what I'm saying. So I'm going to share my screen here. Okay, guys, I think I did it right. So what we're looking at is the CDA. So the CDA council.org, okay? Make sure that you go to the .org, okay? So I really do, again, respect what they do. I love what we do as an organization. I love being a part of those or this organization. So I wanna make sure that, um, you get to see exactly where all this comes from. So you finish 120 hours, you get your certificate, we're gonna celebrate you, woohoo! And then we are going to have you um, go here to get all the credentials. So I wanna back up. Um, we are gonna go to the CDA Council store, okay? So there's a couple of things that I wanna show you. So first things first, this is, these are the books that you can get um, for, um, this course. Okay. The one thing that you will need, these are the workbooks and there's also textbooks as well. Um, I'm going to use some of the information from the textbooks. Um, some of it's great and some of it's okay. Um, it just really depends on what you're looking for. Um, so the next part that you are going to need is this part these CDA competency standards. This is gonna help you guys so much. So there's one for preschool and there's one for infant toddlers and then there's one for family child care. And then there is a home visitor CDA competency standard book. Um, but what we're gonna be focusing on is the green book and the yellow book. So I have both of these books that we're gonna be using. I'm gonna go through them. Um, hopefully we'll be adding a lot of reading content that's like read aloud. So as you're driving to work and things like that, you can actually listen to a piece of the book, which I think is going to be awesome. Um, for those that don't know, um, the learning project is a research project that focuses on um, teachers needs, developmental needs, all of that stuff. So um, just keep that in mind so that you're not like, okay, when does this come? When does that come? When does this come? When does that come? Um, some things change as we go. Because as we get to know your needs, um, we're a live training group. So we put these things together. So we have an outline of what we do. We've, ta um, we've taught this course before, but I just wanted to keep it really open and fresh. So I'm really excited about um, this piece. So you're going to need to go online. You're going to need to get these two books. Get them ASAP. You need them. They're 25 bucks, okay? You will not survive if you don't have this, okay? So make sure that you get that. Um, we are going to, sorry, my um, computer's 
freaking out here. Um, so I want to go into the classroom, okay? So this is our class. Hello. Um, there are going to be some things that are going to change on here, but you'll start with the home button here. And it has course announcements, okay, you guys? So I will set up different course announcements, um, post things, um, all of that good stuff. So you'll get to see a lot of that. Um, you can actually chat with me. So if you have a quick question, you're like, Stephanie, what do I do? Um, I asked some questions here, so they have that. Um, I can actually see who's online. Um, and you can just say hello to everybody. So like if I just wanted to say hello, class, and just put a little smiley face in there, everybody that is enrolled in my class will actually um, get that little message, okay? So, zoom in the slides, okay. Um, there are a couple other things I wanna show you. So you have your course activities. So right now there are, there's one big section that's showing up, which is plan a safe and healthy learning environment. So we're gonna go into some of this. I'll show you around here and actually I'll do it now. So we have blogs, we have lectures, we have information about foods that, and behaviors. Guys, I'm just getting into this and I will tell you what, the food and the brain and behaviors, this is probably one of my favorite sections and I swear that this year is like, this is going to be my topic that I'm going to become an expert in and really educate my teachers in because I really feel that a lot of kids, they're having nutritional deficiencies and it's actually coming out as certain types of behaviors. And when I was reading through all of this content that was talking about how milk changes the mood and how, um, you know, certain foods will um, decrease um, a child's um, blood sugar. I mean, there's so much stuff here. I, I'm just excited. So we're going to look at toxics, uh, toxics and behaviors. We're going to be looking at that. Um, mostly lead poisoning. Um, there are a lot of people that have forgotten about Flint um, and there's so much going on and they're still dealing with all of that stuff um, and how it's impacting their kids. So um, I'm really excited about that. Then I'm going to take you down to some handy dandy resources that you can use to help um, develop yourself as an educator, as well as if you're a director, there are some good um, documentation pieces. Um, you know, there's a lot of different new laws and policies, regulations, things like that. So we'll kind of go into some of that as well. So um, this is how you get into the modules, okay? So when you get into your modules, you just click on one. We're gonna go to the blog. So the blogs are really going to be reading content. Um, eventually I'll have a reader, a reader on there where they will actually read the um, information to you, but you're going to read through this. Then you're going to make a cool little post down here and just basically says reflect on the reading above and share one way to create a positive environment for your students and what would you like to develop in your classroom. So you're going to go right here, you're going to post, you're going to submit, and then you're going to go right to the next lecture. So i um, super excited about this. As you guys submit things, you will see other people's comments and things like that, and you can actually post and like and all that good stuff. Let's be a community that shares. Let's be a community that um, connects together. If we are not that community, you guys, it's going to be like any other training. It's going to be boring. And honestly, I don't want to. I don't want you to be part of boring training, right? We don't want that. Um, so let's go ahead. Look here. Um, and I just want to give you guys a heads up. My screen may look a little different because it is the teaching platform. So just to give you a heads up. So you'll go through all of this here content. So this is really cool. I um, kind of set this little page up. Um, we haven't um, put anything in here yet, but basically any contributes that you guys want to um, put in the course feed, you'll actually start to see them there. Um, there are two different groups here that I have available for you guys. Um, I have infant and toddler rock stars and preschool rock stars. So what you're going to do, you're going to be able to go in here and basically post different 
um, types of information, okay? Um, I have posted a couple of things here. So um, we have videos about um, which course should you do. If you are doing the infant toddler binder, what do you need to have in the infant toddler binder? Um, all of those things. I actually created this. This is one of my babies that I created a long time ago um, that goes over um, 10 tips of making sure what you need to have in your um, portfolio binder. So in addition to me being a trainer, I also um, do the professional development observations. So um, that's something I really love to do because it, you get to go out there and see what the other teachers are doing and see how they're creating. And it's, it's just really awesome. Um, so you could actually hit like on this. Um, you can share your own content. Um, you can share thoughts, images, videos, you guys. This is all about sharing. This is all about us working together as a team to build something amazing, to build something creative. So I want you to remember that, and I don't want you to hold back. This is your time to really develop yourself as an expert. So um, these content areas allow you to do that. Um, the next part is the different subject areas. So these actually are very good. So they have some really great articles in each section that focus on that area. And then basically um, at the bottom here, you're just gonna make a couple comments. You're gonna do that for each subject area, you guys. Don't just put, I like that, that was cool, period. Mm -mm. Don't do it, don't do it. Think about it, <laughs> write about it, and go from there. Some of us have not been in school for a long time, so writing is like, ah, I'm scared. Don't be afraid, okay? Go on here and look over everything, and do not be afraid to use that text to talk, okay? Um, you guys, the app is amazing, and you can also, yeah, you can do the text to talk. It's, I used to do that all the time, especially with papers. Like, do not be afraid of that. Um, we have a gallery down here that we're gonna have pictures and ideas and all kinds of things in. I'm, I'm super stoked about this area. So it hasn't been built. Some stuff hasn't been built because I, we have to do it together. So um, examples of CDA binders, which I'm very excited about. I'm gonna have a ton of different posts here about how to build a portfolio binder, all kinds of stuff. And then we're gonna have our own CDA journal links. So basically each class is gonna allow you to build your portfolio so by the time you get done you uh, you're finished the class you're going to be done with all this so that is basically the overview of what we're going to be doing how we're going to be doing it so i want to go through a piece of the program with you i want to go through this documentation because you are gonna watch a video um, about a family that um, actually had a child that had a severe allergy and they actually died from it, you guys. It's like really like, you, when you watch the video, it is heartbreaking because literally everything that you see happening, um, I'm gonna stop sharing. Everything that you see happening or you hear about happening, um, in this video can happen so easily in the classroom. I will never forget this little girl that um, I had in my, in my center. And um, she actually had a seizure right in front of me. I literally was looking, it was in my office, looked out and I just see her stiff up and then she just falls over. And this sweet little girl was just on the floor. And the first thing I see is my teacher's face like, oh my gosh, what do I do? What do I do? Um, and I could just see this panic on her face. Like, and so I get in there, I go right in there and I start coaching right away and just say, okay, calm down. Let's get her on the side. Let's get this. Let's do this. Let's do that. Take a deep breath. Got to be strong. I mean, like I'm coaching her through this. We call 911. We call mom. But, you know, one of the teachers like Stephanie, I've never gone through that. And I don't know if I didn't have someone to know what to do and be calm in that situation, 
how I would have even handled that, you know? And I think too, just, you know, as a director, everybody that's a director in management, I think we have to remember that some things are very common to us or we're prepared mentally for, or sometimes we're not mentally prepared for it. And we have to be there as a support team for our teachers because they struggle with certain things. And sometimes it's, there's a time to be hard and, you know, be very constructive about what we're trying to accomplish as a team. But there's also that part where we have to realize like, okay, these, this teacher can't function right now because of what they have just experienced, you know? And then sometimes we're like, this is something that happens all the time. But I always try to remember it may be really new for them. You know what I mean? And that's kind of hard at times because when you're like, buck up buttercup, you know, but really they need our compassion. They need us to be there for them. And this kind of goes for teachers too, because there's some teachers, you know, where you're like, oh my goodness, this teacher is so over dramatic. But the thing is, you have to remember everybody's personality is different, you know? Everybody has a point where they need that kind of compassion. They need um they need somebody to be on their side. So, you know, again, back to what I was saying, you're gonna watch a video about um, allergies and you're going to learn all of the things that can happen if a child gets something and what to do about it. And this is a huge topic because there's some people that are like, okay, we're not taking kids that have these kind of allergies or have these different things. Then we have other centers that are like, nope, we're going to take them. We're ready to go. And of course you can't discriminate at all. You guys want to make that super clear, but the thing that makes it so scary is like, what if though we're not really prepared or made for this? And so that is where all of this comes in. These different trainings that are focused on the um, allergies um, that are severe, um, really taking it serious. Like even after I did this, like um, I was sitting there thinking about my own personal center and I'm like, oh my gosh, did I, we need to go back and we're going to check everything. We're going to do everything. And I mean, I just literally went, bananas because I was like I do not want anybody to be in that situation where a child gets a hold of something and it's deadly to them and they die so um I want to show you a whole bunch of content that you can use um it's gonna be great um a lot of this is lined up with Washington state standards but you know what honestly I like looked around a lot and there's some good stuff in states. So just because one state adopts something and you don't have to do it, don't just cut it out. You know what I mean? If there's something there that can help you be better and make you guys more efficient and make you more accurate on what you're doing, take that, okay? Um, put it in your book, put it in your policies, put it in your procedures, add it to your class, whatever it may be. So um, I wanna share my screen again with you guys. We're gonna do that real quick. Okay, so I don't know how my face is looking in this, so I keep looking this way because there's the camera over here. So I don't know. Hopefully I don't look crazy. Just forgive me if it is, okay? So <laughs> we're over here at my screen. And I want to show you a couple of things. So one, we are mandated reporters, okay, you guys? If you do not know this, I want to make you aware of it, okay? Um, you have to make sure, oops, let me, sorry, you guys, let me, let me actually download it because I feel like we are not going to be able to see that at all. Okay, perfect. So, um, the Department of Early Learning and Licensing, that's where this comes from. So if there is ever a situation or an issue um, that you suspect neglect or abuse, you are call you are gonna call the number 1866 in harm. Okay. This is really hard because a lot of teachers will be like, okay, um, if I do this is the people going to, are the people going to know that it's me? Um, I think that's one of the biggest questions that I get from a teacher. And the answer is possibly yes, they can know that it is you. Um, the, even though that it's anonymous, I mean, if there is a specific situation that happens, they could possibly figure it out. Um, with me, I always ask my teachers, do you want me to call or do you want to call? 
Um, a lot of times they'll have me call and that way, if anything happens, the brunt comes on me, you know? Um, and so when it comes to um, being a mandated reporter, this means that you are required to call something in there. If you're a doctor, if you're a nurse, if you're an educator, if you're a firefighter, if you are working in social services, if you work with any vulnerable community, meaning like elderly children, disabled, you are required to um, call different things in. So this really is going into understanding like licensing complaints and inspections, like what are they going to be looking for different things like that. So I just want to share that with you. Um, so the next thing is the licensing handbook. So this is kind of your bread and butter. You guys, if you don't know the licensing rules, things like that, you need to take a chance to go through this and you need to start reading through it. So this is the pickle though. Okay. This part of the training is built off of the old Washington state licensing laws, but they're still applicable. Okay. They still apply. So, um, this is going to have some rules and regulations that are not the same as the new WAC law, the Washington administration code. So, but the thing that I wanted to go over with you are these, um, documents that focus on health and safety okay so there are new washington state laws that talk about um children behavior all of that good stuff so this is one of the things that has kind of changed and i want you to definitely be aware of it um if you're in washington state you just can't kick a kid out anymore like it had you have to have extensive um, documentation showing a child is being harmful to themselves or children or both. Okay. Um, and so this is a sample, um, behavior management guide policy. So it is required that you have one of these, um, in your program as well as an expulsion policy. And I actually will show that to you. So teachers, let's talk about this. So <laughs> sometimes you can't describe what a child has done, right? You're just like, they're being bad. They're not listening. I want them out of my classroom. They're not listening. I can't even get anything done. They're hurting kids. I mean, sometimes it's like a scramble of things that have happened and just like the one last thing that happens, you just hit your peak and you're like, all done. That's not the way this works, okay? When you're using a behavior guide worksheet, you are actually observing the child, okay? So I'm gonna tell you a story about um, toddlers, okay? So we had on our toddler side at my center and a couple actually other centers that I've worked at too, um, kids were like biting like crazy, like piranha style, okay? And it got so out of control. I remember being in that classroom and I was like, oh my goodness, I am not gonna make it because if I have to write one more incident report about a child biting, I'm going to lose it, right? And so what ended up happening, I start realizing that the kids start, were biting around 10 o'clock every day because I looked at the incident reports and looked at the time that it was actually happening. You guys, this is where we have to put our observation hats on. We can't just be like, this kid is just being bad because they're being bad. Like there's always a reason why. And it's not, then you actually find out they're not being bad. They're actually expressing themselves in a way that may not be the best way, but they are, there's some kind of expression situation going on. So we introduced a 10 a.m. snack. So it's just something really light. But the thing that got me was once we did this, guess what? No more piranhas, no more bites. <laughs> it made me so happy to like actually see that the kids were happy they were content and they just needed a snack so I mean again you want to look at these kiddos and when they're having different behavioral things because a lot of times it's something really simple that we just need to activate real quick here 
So let's keep going down. And again, this is in this book here. You can go through it. Um, this goes over any rest period times like that, field trip notice. Um, these are all safety precautions. If you have a child that is going on field trips with you guys, make sure that you have an allergy form that goes over what a child is allergic to. The worst thing that you can do is bring something out there and the child is allergic to it and you're not even sure and you can't even confirm it. Um, so really doing like an allergy checklist, making sure that the kids um, know exactly, 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 exactly what they're eating for the day. And that way you don't give that child anything they're not supposed to have to have as well. Um, infant daily report. This is another safety measure. Um, if you do not use one of these, I highly, 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 highly suggest this. It's going to help build your communication with your families. It's going to help you build your communication even with your team and the little infant. Because if you know that they need certain things or they're eating at a certain time or using the bathroom at a certain time, you're gonna, it's going to be like clockwork. Kids are pretty um, consistent at times when they want to be. Um, and so I would definitely recommend that you get some kind of daily report, make sure that it's available. Um, that way too, if a child becomes allergic to something, you can look back at these daily reports and you can actually see what is going on. Um, I will be going into some daily reports that um, are 100% online. Yeah, very nice. Um, there's three different apps that I'll introduce you guys, introduce you guys to, and I, I love them. I think they're great. Um, and so um, I'll show you those. So this next um, form that I want to show you is a daily attendance form, um, making sure, again, that you are keeping track of the children. This is a great safety measure. Um, and there, I like this little one. I, if you're using something with paper, I like it because it has the comments on the end. So like, for example, if the parents like my child needs diaper cream every five minutes or something like that, you can put that on there and it's a perfect situation. Um, we're going to keep going down because I want to show you a couple other forms. Oh, perfect. Okay. So this is actually um, in, in mentioned in one of your... Um, your blog post, I believe it is, but it's talking about checklists for your playground. So this is really important. So if you do not have a maintenance um, checklist for your playground, inside and outside checklists for in the morning so that you can really make sure that your kids are safe, your teachers are safe, families are safe. You know, if something is broken and you have somebody doing a check in the morning, you know, before the kids are all coming in, you're gonna save someone from getting hurt. Um, if you know there's something out on the playground that needs to be fixed, um, you do that checklist, you can submit it to your director, they can get it fixed, that way no one's getting hurt. Or you can set out cones if you need be, you know. Um, again, this is all about taking pre-precautions. I think a lot of times people get into pickles because they did not take the pre-precaution and they did not slow down enough to say, okay, if this happens, this is what I do. So your checklist really help your brain to get into a process and get into a routine. That is what a checklist basically does. Um, a lot of people, um, they do not think about the, the process and the routine of things. And um, they just go, 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 go. And when you go, 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 then what ends up happening, you actually put yourself in a worse situation and you start digging yourself into a deeper hole. So I want to make sure that you guys know the checklists that are available and out there and some of them that I've shared, um, they're great. Use them. Use them to train. Use them to help create your own processes in your classroom and hold you and your assistant teacher accountable. Um, that's something that you'll hear me say a lot. Accountability is so important. You can either hold someone accountable or you can hold someone to a behavior that will be continual because they think you accept it because you haven't said anything about it. Um, this is the next form that I post here. Keep me at home. If you're vomiting, you would think it makes sense, but it it's a real thing, you guys. Vomiting have a rash or lice or nits, 
Um, I have diarrhea, have diarrhea. I have an eye infection. I have a sore throat. Um, I'm just not feeling good. You guys, that's a real thing. Sometimes babies just don't feel good and they just cry all day. Um, I have a fever. You know, these are things that one, you want to check in the morning, like to do like a little health check in the morning. I think those are really great. Um, asking the parents how they're feeling or the family, how they're feeling, the child's feeling for that day. Um, and then asking, you know, if they weren't feeling good, did you give them Tylenol? Like you want to know, like in four hours, like, is, are, are we going to have a problem? So, um, that's just something to consider and to think about, um, so that we can make sure that we are doing those checks and creating routines in the morning. Um, this is a injury report. This goes over if a child's been hurt, where did they get hurt? Um, time that they were hurt, all of that stuff. Okay. Um, if you're not using an injury report, I would really recommend this one. This one's really nice. I like the fact that they have the child's body there so you can circle where the child is hurt as well. Um, incident, accident logs. This is basically when you, this is a new, uh, not a new thing, but really got to find a good process with this. Okay. So I'm going to share my process. So when my teachers have a in accident or incident log or incident report, what we just went over with the kid with the body. So they fill out the incident report, then they bring it to me. I look over it, I sign it, and then I say, put it on your accident incident log. Okay. They put it there, the family signs it, they keep a copy. If the parent would like a copy, we make them a copy. And then uh, we staple it to the child's individual incident log this is the one thing that i feel like works and it keeps it organized so each child has an incident log like say you have 10 kids all 10 kids names are on one sheet each incident they have you write it down on there and they staple it to that that way for that month if you need to go back and you need to find that what's going on with that child you can actually find out exactly what went on versus like uh let me look through all of these random incident accident logs um and i kind of went into that situation because at first i was like you know what? i'm gonna put it in my office and when i sign it i'll fill it out right but then i got to the point where if they actually needed to use this no one's gonna know where the kid is because we have tons of these things you know um there's also an illness log so um some people combine them it's totally up to you um, how you want to go about doing that. There's um, policy information about lice, um, NITS, all that good stuff. Um, medication. Um, I want to make this really clear. This is probably one of the areas that I really struggle with as far as with teachers and making sure things are locked up, making sure that teachers know who's supposed to give the medication. Um, so, I, you know, in the, in the past, you know, just talking to teachers and hearing how a lot of times they're just like, hey, give this child this medication and the teacher really doesn't know how to give it, making sure that they're properly trained before they give it, making sure that they feel comfortable, making sure that you have somebody that does your medication. I have, you know, one person that go or one or two people that do medication throughout the center. That is who I choose to have because I don't want anybody to be in a situation. Making sure that um, you don't use it any longer than six months making sure that it's in its original box, you guys, and has the prescription on there. That's really, really important. <clears throat> Sorry guys, my voice is going out there. Um, if you are done with the medication, you need to give it back to the family, okay? One of the things that I did not know, which is a, a little bit of a fun fact, um, I didn't know diaper cream, like this happened a couple years ago, I didn't know this. Diaper cream expires, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna openly admit that. It was like three years ago, I'm looking at this diaper cream and I'm like, this diaper cream does not look right. Look on there, lo and behold, there's an expiration date for diaper cream. A lot of people just use diaper cream until it just runs out or whatever. Um, and it's fine. I mean, if you're at home, do your thing, right? But if you were at school and you were at, at your center, you need to make sure that you're checking the expiration on that diaper cream. Because a parent could come in and bring you one. And I've seen it where they've bought tons of them because they were on sale. They didn't use them. And then they gave them to the, the teacher. And the teacher's like, oh, it's brand new. And then you look at the expiration date and you realize like, oh, this expires like in the next three months or four months. 
you want to make sure that you know exactly what you're doing. Uh, medication authorization form. This is the one on DEL. I think it's pretty simple. Um, med medication records. So this is when the child is given the, um, the medication. If there's any side effects, you're going to document it, and that's it. So um, we also have um, a few other things down here, but I'm going to let you guys um, look over that at another time there. Um, let's go to the next file here. This one is for family and home, you guys, so just to give you a heads up. Um, testing for lead and copper, you guys. All of these documents, I want you to go through, look over them. If there's anything interesting, you're going to post a comment down there. Um, you should be testing for lead and copper. Um, I always tell people at least once a year. There are so many toxics in um, the community. I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't play around with it at all. Um, there is a requirement for when you're supposed to get um, everything tested, um, and it's on here. I believe it's like every three years or something like that. Um, but that's not going to be one of the areas that we go into very deep. But I just want to say this because if you don't know the effects of lead poisoning, you, you will learn them in the classroom. Um, this is another water source tip. Um, so if you have a sanitizer or disinfectant that you want to use that typically is not used, um, this is how you get it approved. So a lot of people will uh, request their product to be listed as a product that teachers can use or uh, faculty can use. So just to give you a heads up there, if you don't want to use bleach and water. Um, this is a report of expulsion. So um, we're going to talk more about that, but you'll look at that document. Um, this is if, that's for something else. If you are a manager and you're planning to be absent more, then I think it's 10 days you have to have, and the assistant director's out and the program manager's out, this is how you kind of do that. Um, change of management, uh, medication authorization, that's where that form is individual plan for child care this is one that's really important i want to go over so the video that you watched the little boy he actually like passes away because he got a hold of something that he was extremely allergic to and the thing that got them or got me was that the teachers or the, or the center called the parent first they didn't call paramedics first so anytime that you have a child that is having an allergic reaction, you guys call the paramedics, then call the parent. Because that second, that moment can mean life or death. And we need to know that the, the children are safe and they know exactly, you know, that they're in the right hands. Um, the individual care plan for um, children, it goes over diagnosis any triggers allergy to food i mean it's a pretty extensive document that's going to talk about how you should respond and what should you do and who was trained and then it has like different food allergies and requirements and what are the substitutions i mean there's so much on here so um i want you to look through this um and mention maybe a couple things that you saw in here that you didn't even know um this is super serious you guys um reason why i say this is because you need to know what to do i think that's the hardest part about when you deal with allergies or you're dealing with something um that is deadly to a child it's like what do you do right you want to know what to do and how to do it um our next one is um, immunizations okay so for individuals that get immunized immunized that's perfectly fine if you do not get immunized um, state of Washington we're still one of those states that you can get immunized or not get immunized if you don't get immunized you have to take this form and you have to take it to your doctor and the doctor has to fill it out 
Um, I know the one thing that they are not um, barging on is getting the MMR. So that's the measles, mumps, and rubella shot. And there are some facilities that the teachers have to submit their shot records and all different kinds of stuff. This is the immunization form. Families will fill that out. This is fire drills. This is another safety area. If you have not um, done a fire drill at your center, um, I would recommend that you talk to your director or someone. If you're a director and you know you need to do it, get in there and get her done. Um, I know it's a, a crazy thing, but um, fire drills are very helpful so you know exactly what to do. Um, on these days, sometimes what I'll do is I'll have the teachers do like a run through of what they need to do. If there was an earthquake, you know, get underneath a table. Um, if there's a fire drill, line up on the front of the door. Um, you know, if there's an active shooter, where do you go? Um, all of these pieces are very important to the safety of your children and yourself as well. If you have infants and toddlers, make sure that you remember that you need to turn cribs on the side, cribs go together, and the child goes in there with the adult and a soft padding on top of their head, okay? Um, this is a attendance record for facilities. So um, I recommend that you put one of these in your backpack for your emergency areas, just in case you um, have to run out and your kids are getting signed out, you wanna know who signed the child out or who picked up the child. Um, this is a injury accident report. So that's the last thing we just talked about that. So there's so many things that we just went through. <laughs> And I, I want you to be able to go through all of it. I want you to go through all the modules, you guys. Give me feedback. Let me know what you think. What can we put in? What can we take out? Um, I want this to be something that you feel like you're getting a lot out of. Um, and I hope that you enjoy the training. And again, welcome to the Learning Project. I'm so excited that you are here. And remember, the Learning Project is not about the kids it's not about learning the crafts this is about doing the work within yourself and what better way than to do it with me stephanie courtney your trainer your person i'm here for you guys you be here for me remember that you know staying on track is going to be your number one key and guide to finishing this program um, and so get in there, finish all the different pieces, make sure that you know exactly where you're at. Um, as you finish it, it's going to say complete, 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 complete. And you're just going to be one step closer in getting that, um, certification and getting your CBA. I want to thank you guys so much again for listening. I hope you enjoyed this moment, this time. Enjoy it. Grow learn and develop. Thank you guys. Have a great night.